10. We allocate money now to early childhood education. We have to, because that's part of our promise to the people of St. Lucia. A $2,500 grant from the government comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Your institution will benefit, children will benefit. What's your reaction? And that's fantastic. I mean, everybody can, can use something like that because this is not what you call a high profit venture. It means a lot to me because I can see what I can do with it for the children to enhance my school and its development. I'm so proud, I'm so happy that the Prime Minister have found it in him to give us that small grant to assist us. Nine. In a landmark development for St. Lucia's educational landscape, students will soon receive formal instruction in the island's traditional language when Creole instruction commences at the start of the new academic year. It gives us this opportunity to safeguard our linguistic history, but it also gives us an opportunity for us to integrate our culture into our curriculum. Eight. The St. Lucia Technical and Vocational Education and Training TVET Council Summer Camp held this year in the Mabuya Valley concluded successfully with commendations from attendees and organizers alike. The camp aimed to equip students with valuable vocational skills while fostering a sense of community and teamwork. TVET is a stepping stone and it's an opportunity to build your career. You have the skills now we have given you the opportunity, the interest and the foundation has been laid. 7. Staff members from health facilities participated in a quality improvement training. The training provided participants with an opportunity to explore quality improvement in healthcare with the focus specifically on screening and treatment for diabetes and hypertension. The participants are going to be confident that they have the tool set, the skills, the information that can take them to the next level in terms of the hypertension and diabetes care. Six. The Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Caribbean UBEC project has begun distribution of 34,000 bags of lime, also known as calcium carbonate to both vegetable and banana planting farmers island-wide, signifying a noteworthy advancement in the nation's effort to alleviate food insecurity. So today I'm very happy as Minister for Agriculture to witness this. It is one of 62 activities on the, what we call the CERC pro, um, project or World Bank project dealing with food and nutrition insecurity and um, our farmers are making very good use of it because it is free to all farmers. Five. Seven local community groups across St. Lucia were engaged and mobilized to enhance the livelihood, food security, and resilience of vulnerable communities in St. Lucia. This was achieved through a comprehensive training program on backyard gardening and sustainable agriculture practices. I think it's time that we really heighten a call of action of us all to eat what we grow and eat local. Four. The United States Agency for International Development, USA, held the Youth Resilience, Inclusion and Empowerment Wiry Uplifters Summer Experience. Uplifters Summer Experience six-week program focused on psychosocial skills of children. We looked at a lot of activities to do with tolerance, how to work in teams, how to resolve conflict, getting them to discuss their matters that, that affect them, um, allowing them to be able to, to say how they feel without being violent about it. Three. The Mikut community was abuzz with energy and excitement as the Le Club Volleyball Athletics Club, in partnership with St. Lucia Moves and the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, delivered a vibrant action-packed day of volleyball as part of the ongoing Round the Island Volleyball Series. This event not only showcased the athletic skill sets of participants, but also aligned seamlessly with the Ministry of Health's mission to promote healthier lifestyles. So we are encouraging persons to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So by knowing their numbers, knowing their blood pressure, their readings, that we, we can also counsel them and help them to make proper lifestyle changes. Two. In preparation for the new academic school year, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs 
takes this opportunity to remind parents to be proactive and stay updated with the latest information and guidelines. To reduce the spread of infections, if your child develops symptoms including coughing, runny nose, sore throat, fever, vomiting and diarrhea, seek medical care and do not send your child to school until they have resolved. One.